Hey, what's up, fam? The villains, the actual enemies, are now here. It's not... It's, it wasn't so much as there was, you know, maybe someone secretly wanting to jump on the top and take over the elves or anything like that. It is... It's what a lot of people, I think, believe that were going, was going to happen. You know, some foresight in the, uh, in the wording. It wasn't obviously... It, it, some people thought it was, you know, a misdirection. I am one of those people, I won't lie. I... I didn't think it was going to go exactly like this. I thought it was going to be, you know, pulled away into a different direction. But even if it is this way, I still like it because it it opens up a, a really interesting future for Black Clover. And I'll talk about that when we, you know, a little bit in the video. But obviously, where it was as we started out, we hear, you know, some nice inner thoughts from Raya and how he's thinking about how he actually saw who betrayed the elves and and stuff what happened uh, really saying who it was not maybe by name but just like the presence of them and how he didn't want to actually tell anybody um between the other third eye people because he didn't want to uh kind of break their goal uh to getting revenge on the humans it looks he still had some uh grudge against them but the him and they sorry i'm stirring a little bit uh the humans not being the base part of the problem is you know could have potentially as it rise a damp in their view on things but in the large uh, kind of vision of it he was wondering even amongst like you know i didn't tell them and that was my bad and you know all these things kind of transpired from it but more importantly who was able to you know put a hole in my chest pretty much like this so easily and it does look like you know lone roni or whatever whichever name is the correct one is the traitor it does i don't know if it this one really implies if it's the actual version of lone or if it's somebody else possessing them or you know what but definitely this person is the enemy and i think it might not be a i think it might actually be a corrupted elf as i talked about before you know when elves get to a certain level of corruption i think they kind of just tip over from like morally just the way that they're they don't seem a very like a very violent race so like all these negative emotions on them um i think just has a very overall large hindrance to their being but we get a really interesting bit that comes out of it when he talks about a demon it inhabits the fifth leaf so obviously i don't think a lot of us need to really think too heavily on at least what that implies as of now maybe it's a misdirection and it's something that will uh, turn out differently in the future. I, I doubt it. I think it is, you know, getting some information on the fifth leaf clover. The grimoire of despair was born on the day that everything happened. So uh, I'm guessing that when the events, you know, happened from this point when there was the, you know, the big tragedy, is when the grimoire itself, like, uh, licks, as it says, grimoire of despair, the fifth leaf, kind of stemmed out from what he had before and. Now this guy has the last magic stone, puts it in the pedestal, and he talks about how he's able now to connect the boundary between the two worlds, between their world and the uh, the shadow palace, like on the other end, because the shadow palace is the kind of like the I, I want to I don't want to say bridge because it's more of like this connecting uh, castle. I don't really know if I have a, a good enough description of that. You know, just uh, you know a control point between the two and he's using it to bring back a demon and see so this though in while well, talking about it you know you get this really creepy looking demon so i actually really like the split uh down the middle of his uh his mouth like through his chest that big like open gash but something about it i thought was actually more interesting um well I won't say more interesting, very interesting, is how he says that there's imperfections um, about his body. So I'm guessing that this is not going to be him at full power. I'm guessing this isn't going to be, uh, this isn't the first, this isn't the only demon. I think this is just the first that we're really getting inside this world. And where that goes, I'm, I'm very curious as to what demons will be like for Black Clover and how it's going to be you know where they fit into everything and what they're going to affect in the future but oh my god i i, I tried to say like something i thought was really interesting about his body like seeing it's imperf imperfect and, you know that obviously implies like he could be way more powerful than what we see here 
And, but even though I think that was a really interesting part, I can't lie to the fact that what we find out about is uh, his power as it goes. And honestly, something I, I did notice is just the creepy extra length of his arms, very similar to the creature within the, uh, the five-leaf grimoire. And he's talking about how it was very easy to trick the uh, humans into attacking the elves. Because something that is true, I think, very depicted on humans uh, throughout fiction is humans can get very greedy uh, for power. I mean, it's obviously not all humans, but I, I think it's just a very um, very believable staple, uh, you know, uh, of just our being. And even if... Uh, even if it can be overcome, it's definitely a point that can be made uh, in a story. And you have all these uh, very rich and powerful humans, though, even though they're powerful for them, compared to the elves, they, they weren't really much. And just kind of playing in that insecurity definitely came out for this demon. We don't get his name yet. I don't think it's seen anywhere. But he when he's like bad-mouthing Patry and, and, and just, like, making him look like an idiot. Patry, who's, like, this pretty clever guy, this good scheming guy, it doesn't real didn't realize until now that he was being played the whole time and uses his, uh, his light speed, uh, judgment swords, and the demon just says return, and they just go back. And if, luckily, you know, is there with his, uh, this mana zone, like, that speed-up ability he has, and was able to, you know, get them out of there, and... It wasn't for the fact he was trying to help them. It's the fact that William Vengeance's body, you know, it, it's still his body even if Patriot's the one in control. And that's going to have something to I want to talk about uh, in a minute. But he's like, you know, you know, I don't know what you're thinking. And he's just like, well, I'll end it here. You know, I'm not going to, just because you're, you know, you seem pretty impressive doesn't mean I'm not going to stop you. He's, you know, the spirit storm from behind. And the demon. <laughs> just says vacuum all and then it's talked about how he has reality altering word magic so yes all the demons are gonna have some broken power like obviously this could be way more I, I don't think it's gonna be the same as like if it was more like uh fate manipulation on top of it, like he could alter events then oh obviously he wouldn't be able to win i i think it has to be more of used within the normal flow of time as long as he could think of a way to do it but just the fact that this dude has reality altering magic like jesus christ tabata is going crazy with some of these powers and i'm i'm extremely curious to where he's going to scale like what position this demon like where he's gonna be within things i'm hoping he's there's no way he's gonna be some small fry he's definitely got to be someone amongst the demons that they're intelligent enough like he the schemer there's there's got to be like a handful kind of like i think a really good uh comparison is maybe like if you if you've read or watched some of the since the ten commandments they had um fraudrin or ever pronounce his name he was the one that was you know helping the demons get back and he was actually the second weakest out of their whole group that could be I don't, i'm hoping something with this guy where even though he's a big deal he's not a big deal to them and i'm, I'm guessing we are going to get more uh of the demons and to the last two chapters are really where i a lot of what i wanted to to really brood over came from and like one is now that as i said in the last chapter that it looks like humans and elves aren't really they don't really hate each other in in a, in a real sense it was all misguided it was all somebody else orchestrating what happened and i think that's a really a uh, really big shift for what's for where the the characters can go because now the humans and the elves have a common enemy and we can get a lot of really interesting progression of of uh where exactly they could uh go to get along they have to they're gonna have to work together in order to fight off this threat these demons uh, assuming there's more than just this one I, th there's got to be more than one. Oh, we know that the creature in Asta's grimoire is if this guy's a demon he's not like i said a dark elf then that guy in that grimoire is more than likely a demon and my dark elf theory is completely out the window but uh, just the character progression alone of how they're going to mend sides and opinions of each other and 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 just kind of have to put the past aside even the real things that they kind of transpired for them all the the humans that were probably killed or their city being destroyed the fact that julia uh, that julius you know has fallen from it and you know any of these other characters who have died from it 
even though they did it, they did it from being tricked, but it's still going to hold weight to the humans and similar to the elves. Like, the humans still were tricked into attacking them. So, even if it's not entirely their fault, they still have a burden behind it that they're all, both sides are going to have to carry on their shoulders and, you know, and learn to deal with it while at the same time they're learning to deal with, you know, and get along with the, you know, these people who they thought they were their enemy. But also, the thing that I think is going to be really interesting is next chapter, we are going to see, there's no way it's not going to happen within the span of this demon character being there. Because he's going to see Asta's grimoire, he's going to, there's no way, there's no way that he's not going to have at least a comment about the creature inside Asta's grimoire. There has to be something, maybe a name drop, maybe a comment on how significant that demon is. Maybe it will explain how the elves got him. Maybe he was also a high-ranking demon, but he was captured and put inside the grimoire to aid the elves in their battle. I don't know. We will find out. There, there's, like I said in the last one, this is big. This is a huge step for the series because it's not, oh, hey, bad guys. It's not, hey, new enemies to fight. It's everything that we were believed happened and was the base root of the humans and the elves hating each other is all based off of them both getting played by this demon or more demons and it really just it opens up a much more than just hey we got new enemies it is a moment that they are going to have to to realize that you know both sides have been wrong this whole time and even for hundreds of years they They've been building this, you know, hatred of each other, whether the humans, you know, going through physical generations while the elves were these lingering souls, that it, it's all been completely fabricated. And even if they, they want to put it aside, they still have, you know, that forged opinion of the other that they're going to have to try and cope with and figure out how to deal with. And it's just going to be interesting on a lore stand base, a character stand base, uh, a progression of how they're going to go. And, and yet, there's, again, there's still so much more to do. Like, it, it might not even be demons. There could be more uh, creatures. Because I know, I know people were talking about uh, maybe it being Norse. I think Black Clover is... I still think Black Clover is going to be more of, like, a traditional... In, in the mindset magic fantasy world, like D&D, where even if you're going to have elves and dwarves and demons, there's going to be tons of stuff. And I think it, we're definitely going to start getting a lot of... Uh, of reveals for that soon and, and I like this we've gotten so many thick like lore drops like within the last couple chapters while at the same time getting action character progression uh really nice art and and moving towards that final battle of of the biggest art so far in black clover and I think this is going to be not only the end of what I would say part one of One Piece before, I, or One Piece, sorry, I was going to use One Piece as an example when I was talking about a time skip, but for Black Clover, it would be, I think this is going to be the time, right before a time skip, who knows how long, but uh, I think it will have to cut to like a, uh, a time where the humans and the elves have started to, uh, you know, at least attempt to band together and maybe go against any of these demons that come through the Shadow Palace. Uh, but I also think, honestly, I think this is one of the best arcs in recent shonen. Like, I've been really digging um, a lot of the uh, newer, younger shonens. Um, I, I can't really use uh, certain stuff, even if I've really been liking it. Something like um, uh, something like the current Fairy Tale arc or Eden Zero or anything by a returning person. You gotta keep in mind, Tabata, this is his first, like, success. And I'm like, it's just so, it's been so good, this entire arc. And it's just, it's been solid, consistent. Like, all these characters have all got character development. They've all got their own spotlight. They've all had they, this, these these great times to really get to know some of these people without it feeling dragged out, without it feeling forced. And um, and it just carries so nicely onto the next character. And at the same time, carrying through this nice lore uh, transitions and these nice developments of what exactly is going on in the story. And that is something I really like with Black Clover right now. And I think it's doing excellent in presenting itself as such and it, it 
it, it's crazy when you think about it. When, when the series came out, whether it's the anime or the manga, people just compared it to being this Naruto clone. But it it stands on its own two feet so well. And I, I think this was a really good chapter to demonstrate it, that Tabata has a, a plan. He knows what he's doing. Even if there's parts you might not like, it could easily tie into his uh, whole kind of meshed web idea of things and lead to this really interesting development for the story and he's consistent with it too and i think that's one of the better traits of him i think the fact that he is able to uh, really not go a chapter that feels wasted where it just felt like you just read it to fill up a weak spot it feels like you're getting something and i really like that about this series and this again was a really good example of it so drop a comment below in the comment section tell me what you thought about this chapter and thumbs up the video befriend the like button and the subscribe button and check out my other videos i do daily videos and i make sure to you know to review the ones that i really like and i hope that you guys will also enjoy as honestly as i can i don't want to you know make up any opinions or beliefs just reviews and clicks i will give it the i'll give you my honest pure take on something when i am going through it it could change in the future but like I said, this review has been 100% honest, as I always do with my reviews. So other than that, I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed, and I thank you all for listening. Bye.